Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? I'm not going to lie, I never thought I would cover this specific scenario in one of my videos, but it was a request of one of my subscribers. Well, I hope the person who made the request subscribed, because if not, I will find you. And I will. So in this video I'm going to discuss whether or not Spinosaurus could survive in the Everglades or not. I immediately can hear the audible screams of people through the screens, saying well obviously it could survive, it's a 7 plus ton predator that lived in prehistoric swamps. Obviously, it could dominate in the Everglades of today. Well, yes and no. There are different factors that decide whether or not an organism can strive in an environment. Yes, being a dominant predator is one of them, but so is temperature, prey selection, and adaptability, which is theorized to be one of the major downfalls of the Spinosaurus. So, quick history lesson. Spinosaurus was one of the big theropods, with it now being placed at rank number 5 after being overthrown by Mercurcansis and Moposaurus. But take this with a grain of salt because these ranks are always changing due to new scientific updates that are constantly being made. It lived during the late Cretaceous in what is now Africa, and that's just about as much as we confidently know about the Spinosaurus. I say this because almost every other aspect of this creature is constantly changing due to very few fossil leads from the World War. Things such as diet, its size, yes its size, remember when Spinosaurus was 59 feet long and 21 tons? Ah yes, the good old days before 2021. And now there are some articles saying that this thing couldn't even swim due to its bone density. But as it stands, majority of the research at least supports that it was mostly a piscivore that fed on the occasional small to medium sized dinosaur when the opportunity presented itself. Basically acting like modern day crocodilians in terms of hunting behavior. So waiting in the water or just submerged. It lived in one of the most competitive ecosystems or points in dinosaur history possibly second only to the early to middle Jurassic. It lived with different types of crocodilomorphs, abelisaurs, and the carcarnotosaurus, which it did have some contact with and contrary to what Dinosaur Planet depicted, it probably lost or withdrew most of these confrontations. Not saying it was a pushover in any way, but when you're a specialized animal with a delicate sail, you try to avoid major injury as much as possible. Its speciality is also what led to its downfall as the climate changed and its prey source died or migrated elsewhere to deeper water, it couldn't adapt fast enough, and so it became extinct. Now that the recap is over, what would happen if God decided to give it a part 2 and drop it into the Everglades? There are two species of Spinosaurus being the Egypticus and the Moroccanus, with the first being the larger of the two, so we're going to use that one. First off, with an almost 8 ton 4 to 6 foot long boat sail lizard, it's going to need some space to move around so it would mostly try to inhabit the more open areas of the Everglades, and only going into the very densely packed areas when hunting or just chilling in the water I suppose. I couldn't find any specific sources saying how the exact climate or constant temperature was in that time period and area, but the ones I did find depicts it to be very similar to that of the Everglades of today. So now that we got the basics out of the way, what will this thing eat? And I just have to say I'm, I'm at a loss for this one. Spinosaurus needed a lot of calories to support itself. And yes, the Everglades has an abundance of prey, but it's limited when factoring this almost 8 ton freak. To be very honest, the only prey source I see Spinosaurus sustainably supporting itself on are the gators. First of all, a f pardon? This is because they are quite abundant in the Everglades, and they are also quite literally the largest animal in there also, year round. The manatee rivals it in size, but they migrate so I won't count them in. Male alligators on average get to around 12 feet long and 800 pounds, with very large individuals pushing 15 feet and 1400. It would have to rely on alligators as a sustainable food source due to the fact that anything else over 300 pounds was much faster and could outrun Spinosaurus easily like the deer, Florida panthers and the black bears. And the biggest fish there, the alligator gar, is not that much of a viable option considering its numbers are still recovering and they rarely exceed 200 pounds. So to feed a Spinosaurus it would require at least 3 or more fish of that size to sustain itself daily. And this makes sense considering that the ray finned fish it hunted back in the past were more than 800 pounds on average and quite abundant. 
It did live with a famous prehistoric crocodilian, however, that still strikes fear in humans to this day. The humans in question being those of us that play Ark, the Caprasuchus. This thing was around 21 feet long and 1200 kilograms on average, so it was no threat to adult Spinosaurus but possibly to juveniles. And while it was mostly a terrestrial crocodilian, I would imagine Spinosaurus would take one out if the opportunity presented itself. The way Spinosaurus would mostly approach an alligator to take it out would be waiting in the water to catch it off guard or just snatching one on the bank while it's basking. Yes, it's kinda scummy, but so is nature. Spinosaurus had conical teeth meant for mostly piercing so gators would die from being impaled by a thousand spikes and eventually succumbing to blood loss rather than being crushed if we were to replace Spinosaurus with another large theropod. Now large alligators bite forest wasn't that far off from the Spinosaurus with it being a crocodilian and all. And also for its size, Spinosaurus didn't have that strong of a bite force. I doubt alligator populations would be impacted since they're thriving and also Spinosaurus would, wouldn't be densely packed together with each other considering their size and territory. There were also abundance of things today that can eat Spinosaurus eggs or the hatchlings, including tegus, snakes, bass, raccoons, etc etc. The juveniles would also now be susceptible to large bull gator attacks and yearlings had the potential to be taken out by large shoelace specimens which have taken over the Florida ecosystem. Burmese pythons did have the potential to be one of the adult Spinosaurus menu items, but they rarely exceed 160 pounds in weight and the very largest specimens rarely, very, very rarely reach 300. Juvenile Spinosaurus however could thrive considering the prey that would be too small for them as an adult would now be more acceptable for their size. So with all of this in mind, could Spinosaurus survive the Everglades? I, I don't know. Like I'm really not sure what answer to give. I would say it would be possible for a small population to establish itself in the Everglades. And while I don't think alligator populations would be affected that much, it would still cause a rift effect since alligators are one of the few animals capable of checking python populations, which they are still barely making a dent in. And they are also the key predator to other animals in the ecosystem. So this has the possibility to throw the entire area off course. Also, with how constantly Earth's climate is changing and how this species is known to not be that adaptable, it would be challenging keeping populations alive for a long time. And I still am not sure if they would even actively hunt alligators to be honest. That's just my theory, since there is literally nothing else in the environment that is large enough in size or population to support it. For all we know, it may choose not to eat the gators and just starve to death. But let's be honest, the main reason it probably won't survive is due to the Florida man which has a reputation of, well, um, enforcing his power, to put it lightly. But in all seriousness, with the exclusion of human intervention, I'm leaning mostly towards that they probably won't thrive in the Everglades. But what do you guys think? Could this constantly changing menace survive the Everglades? Also, I'm not only going to cover could this survive in today and etc etc videos, since I want to diversify my content. But I will take some requests into consideration like this one and I will work on some of my own that I've had for a while. So with that being said, Reggie, where were my rice knuckles?